Hi there guys, how are you doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas Patnaik and guys I'll be taking this lecture series ahead based on cycloidal curves and today the problem that I'm going to deal with is based on hypocycloid. So it's going to be problem number 3 in this series and let's see what problem number 3 has in store for us. Let's get started. And here it comes. A circle of 50 mm diameter rolls on the circumference of another circle of 175 mm diameter and inside it. Trace the locus of the point on the circumference of the rolling circle for one complete revolution. Okay, name the curve, draw tangent and normal to the curve at a point 50 mm from the center of directing circle. Now guys, if you have not seen my first lecture that is introduction to cyclonal curve, I would strongly recommend all you guys to watch that lecture and then come on uh, for watching this video tutorial. Alright, because there I had explained as to how a hypocyclide is formed. Anyway, if you have seen that lecture, no issues, no problems, we can go ahead and you know very well whenever a rolling circle starts to roll inside a directing circle, the curve generated is in fact a hypocycloid. Alright, let's get the datas. Alright, rolls inside the directing circle, fine. Rolling circle diameter is 50 mm, so the radius is going to be 25. Directing circle diameter is 175 and hence its radius, capital R, is going to be 87.5. Okay, divide 175 by 2 and you will get 87.5. Alright, let's move ahead. Okay, theta is equal to 360 into d by d on putting all these values, you're going to get this 102.8 degrees. But what exactly is this 102.8 degrees? Just uh, think about this guys, when rolling circle will roll, okay, and it completes one revolution, then some kind of an angle will be subtended at the center of the directing circle. And the angle subtended for one revolution is going to be 102.8 degrees, okay. I'll be uh, making sure that this reflects perfectly in a drawing and let's get started with the drawing, okay. Fine, let's move ahead. So initially let me put a point, let's say this point is O and let's regard this particular point as the center of the directing circle. Okay, now let's draw a line randomly and this line is going to be what you call the radius of the directing circle. As I've already told you, the diameter is 175 and hence its half is going to be the radius, that's 87.5. Alright, and the angle subtended, okay guys, this angle subtended is going to be 102.8. So for this is the zero mark, you're going to come here, 90, 100, 102.8, something like this. Okay, so this is the line, okay, this is 87.5 millimeter long line, that's it. Let's move ahead and let's place a point over here, okay. Right, now from this point, as far as epicycloid is concerned, we went ahead this side and when you speak of hypocycloid as the circle will be rolling inside so it's going to be having a center in this direction so the rolling circle has a radius of 25 from this point at a distance of 25 millimeters you need to put a point something like this so this is going to be the rolling circles uh, center all right so with this as center and with this much as radius 25 as radius you're going to draw a circle simply okay now moving ahead, let me give it some dimensions. The dimension is uh, 25, R25, ruling circle. You can clearly see that this circle is already looks as if it has been divided into two equal parts. Let's make it four. So these angles are 90 degree each, all right? So two was made to four and four can be made to eight, okay? You can bisect this angle, this angle, all these four angles, okay? So that you'll end up having the circle divided into eight equal parts, something like this, all right? Fine, let's move ahead. And I'm giving them some numbers, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You, you guys must have observed that I've done the numbering in the clockwise sense, starting from this point. So there is a specific reason for choosing this point as number 1. Okay, I'll come to that in a short while, but uh, let's move ahead. And rolling is going to happen in this anti-clockwise sense, because the circle is right now over here. It has to come over here. So it, it is going to roll in the anti-clockwise sense uh, to reach, uh, to complete one revolution and finally end up somewhere here. Okay, that's the rolling circle. Fine. Um, let's move ahead and we'll draw these curves, these arcs, so called from O as the center and P, OP as the radius. You're going to draw this arc. Now, with O as the center and O7 as the radius, there you go. O as the center and O6 as the radius, there you go. O as the center and this much from this point to this point, that is center to center, center of directing circle to center of rolling circle. Let us draw this center arc, okay? Now with O5, with O4, that's it. Now I just think about this, when this rolling circle will start to roll in the anti-clockwise sense, okay, this is the direction given. This particular point uh, tends to come into contact with this surface initially, okay? After this point, this point will come into contact. So following a sequence, whoever comes into contact initially, I have given it, 
a number so number one has been for this point this is going to be the second point which is going to come into contact so similarly you should realize that one by one each and every point is going to leave its impression on this surface and finally after one revolution is complete you should realize this that uh, all these points are gonna line up in this way one is going to be here two is going to be here three four five six seven and this is going to be finally point p so by now you would have realized that this arc in itself would get divided into eight equal parts okay and that's what we're going to do right now now you can clearly see that this 102.8 can be bisected okay simple angular bisection has to be carried out okay and this is the line which is the bisector in fact okay now take this angle for example okay you can bisect this angle like this and now take this angle for example you can bisect this angle like this now you can clearly see that this particular angle 102.8 has been divided into four equal parts now initially it was two parts then we made two to four and finally you have to consider all these four parts individually bisect them and you're gonna end up having eight equal parts something like this that's it and guys if you're still in doubt how this angle has been divided into eight equal parts go back to the previous video where I had explained epicycloid and there you will see a very much detailed explanation as to how this whole process can be done okay now let's move ahead with this and we're gonna have to place these so-called centers this is the initial position of center c0 this is gonna be c1 c2 c3 4 5 6 7 8 something like this so these are all the center points now guys the time has come to use the compass a rounder all right so set your rounder at 25 millimeters keep it at c1 and through this arc passing through one you need to put an arc something like this okay so this is going to be our point p1 let's make a point okay now with c2 as the center and again 25 as the radii you need to put an arc passing through point 2 so this is the arc passing through point 2 and somewhere along this arc you need to put an arc okay so this is going to be your point p2 all right now with c3 as center and with this arc passing through 3 you need to put an arc here again okay please follow this somewhere here so this is going to be your point p3 all right let's move ahead with c4 as center okay and with this arc passing through 4 we're going to make an arc it's not going to intersect rather it will touch okay something like this please watch this carefully this way this is our point p4 now with c5 as center and with an arc passing through 5 so this is the arc passing through 5 and c5 as center let me make an arc so this is going to be your point p5 now with c6 as center and with an arc passing through 6 okay c6 as center somewhere here that's it that's p6 similarly we have this with an arc passing through 7 we have c7 and with c7 as the center you again need to put an arc something like this and this is going to be your point p7 and finally p8 will be here okay watch this this is going to be p8 and when you join all these points with the help of a smooth curve the curve you're going to have is what you call a hypocycloid all right guys now so this is what you call a hypocycloid fine and the next thing that we've got to do is to make a tangent and a normal at a point that is 50 millimeters away from the center of directing circle so this is the directing circle okay this is the directing circle and this point o is its center now with os center and with a radii of 50 millimeters okay you need to again make use of a compass for this 50 millimeter radii with os center you need to put an arc cut an arc over here on this hypocycloid something like this please watch this this is the arc and this is the point let us say that this point's name is q okay q is the point where a tangent and a normal are to be placed now with q as the center and with 25 millimeters as the radii you again need to put an arc somewhere along this this arc over here okay like this 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 is the point all right so let's say this point's name is m okay and when you join m with o you're gonna have a line okay and i've produced this line in the backward direction okay you can clearly see that this surface has been intersected this arc has been intersected somewhere here let's say the name is s and when you join s with this point over here that is q you're gonna have a normal that's what you call a normal and at right angle or perpendicular to a normal we have a tangent and it should be just grazing through or just touching this hypocycloid also that's what you call a tangent all right okay guys that was all from my side if you have any doubts or queries, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them as quickly as possible. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Keep drawing.